So the regulated community living means that, you know, uh, we live in a community, but it's subject to a set of rules and subject to a group of people doing the management work. And the ultimate aim of any strata community living is to lead you to what we call self-management. What do you mean by self-management? It started by developer, then you go into a JMB situation where it's joint management between the developer and the owner. And ultimately, the aim is to have this community self-managed by all the owners only, of course, subject to the applicable law, right? And it just got crowded right now uh, uh, in this sphere of management because um, there's this whole idea of COVID-19. 2020, for all intent and purposes, have changed many people's lives. Right? From the context of property management for strata property, uh, new normal only means that there will be more things to comply with other than the Strata Title Act, Strata Management Act, and the Strata Management Regulation, and also the rules and uh, that's applicable to you imposed by the local authority, as well as the bylaw being passed uniquely for your community. Today, we have to also learn about the SOP and updates from KKM, MKN. Uh, sometime you'll see Prime Minister Muhyiddin appearing on the TV screen and give you special taklima, special notice, right? And also direction from KPKT and local authority. So today, uh, living in the strata community means that you're subjecting yourself to a new set of management rules and regulation and got crowded, like I said, because of COVID-19. And obviously, we have a very unique act in Malaysia, it's called the COVID-19 Act. And because of the COVID-19 Act, that sort of freeze the time and suspend a lot of uh, statutory performance and contractual performance. As a result, it has an impact on property management for strata property. So, so today, I'm going to address five very interesting topics because I only have 20 minutes. So what are actually the strata management issue in the new normal? I'll break it down to five. Number one, obviously, how do you run an AGM and EGM in this era of uh, physical distancing, right? So number two, um, how do you run committee meeting then? You know, can you run it online? If you're running it online, what do you do? So I'm going to go through a very special focus. How do you run through committee meetings online? And remember, a good property man, a good property management shall ensure the value of your property is preserved, especially in today's context. Therefore, everyone have a role, right? Although you are just the owner, it's not me against the management. You are part of the management. Get that uh, mindset right. And third one that I would like to go through with you is actually the commencement of a preliminary management period because of the impact of the COVID-19 act, the impact of the handover, because newer property need to handover, there is some challenge. So again, we'll look through that in a little bit more details. Uh, and then the fourth one is really, if it's still under the defect liability claim, let's say your property is still within two years after the VP uh, for during the period of 2020 and now, what do you do if there's still defect claim? Because there is a problem about how do they perform the defect rectification by the property developers. And the last one, obviously, will give you some tips, what are the do and don'ts of the management body. So these are the five things that I want to cover in my presentation. And you can ask me any question later at the Q&A. So let's go. Running of AGM and EGM, as you know, annual general meeting, extraordinary general meeting. The one thing about general meeting is there's a lot of people. So when there are a lot of people, is it a key concern in the COVID-19 new normal? The answer is yes, because how do we practice uh, social distancing? How do we do the tracking? Do you need the QR code for my Sajatra? Things that like this will come up to your mind. So, but before we go further ado in relation to this, let's look at what is the applicable direction that's unique to this new normal. I told you already, new normal means that we have to live with COVID-19. To new normal also means that we have to live by a new set of rules and regulation in relation to this SOP published from the authority from one from time to time. And specifically on the running of AGM and EGM for JMB and Management Corporation MC for strata development. A good point to start reference to this is really uh, to MKN. The version that I have presented before you right now is updated until 18 March 2021. So like I said, I'm just giving you as at that day, if there's an issue, then you need to know what needs to be done. Right? So again, the sector here is uh, Pengurusan Strata PKPB. Right? So this is where it's applied to area where it's under 
the CMCO. You can see today at this juncture, we are focusing on uh, Masharan Agong Tahunan, which is uh, AGM, or Masharan Agong uh, uh, Luar Biasa, which is EGM, right, in that sense. Now, let's put it this way. You can have physical meeting for EGM and AGM, right? Uh, there's no problem, and you subject to 50% of the capacity of the hall, right? That's important, 50% of the capacity of the venue. So it's very venue driven. So it depends uh, how many people you want. And of course, you can always run AGM and EGM online. And the word used by the directive is encourage the galakan. So later we'll look at how do you conduct AGM and EGM online and what are the do and don'ts that you need to know. But very importantly, you have to understand that it's very encouraged. Right? And then you have to really follow the procedure set by the MKN, right? So let me remind everyone at this juncture, uh, the key in relation to any dispute prevention. See, one of the problem when you run an EGM and AGM in a new setup subject to SOP, as well as you know doing it online, you might subject yourself to a lot of challenge. So the idea here is keep your evidence, show your proof, Right, track your thing very properly. Make sure that you can tell that you know you give proper notice and everyone's attendance being properly recorded and proven and supported by something. Remember, evidence and proof are the key in dispute prevention. So think like that. Everything you do, whatever that you need potentially having a dispute, you must be able to have evidence and proof. Right. This is especially for those who are sitting in the committee. All right? And for those who want to attend the general meeting, for example, and the meetings, you must be always prepared with your evidence and proof. Okay. Now, before the AGM or EGM uh, online, for example, you want to do that. Remember, you can have an offline option, but it's subject to the size of the venue is 50% capacity. But if you choose to go online, uh, by the way, you can also have online and offline together, but you have to then really think through your process, the running of the proceeding and make sure that you have support, evidence and proof. That's very important, right? Management body shall issue notice of meeting for and copy to the COB is very important. If you want to do online, you make sure that the notice shall be sent by hand, register post and display at the notice spot and email a copy to all strata owners and see. The idea is not all. The idea here is that you have to do your by hand register post and at the same time do your email as well. So you have all this evidence and this way will support you to prevent any dispute. Last thing you want is for any of your owner will come back and say that to you that, you know, we never received your notice, correct? So it's very important also to say that your notice shall include some of these things. Number one, the location is very important. So the where, the location. Location could also be an online platform. So location could be the community hall of your development, right? Or it could be actually a, a URL, which means that you have to spell out the entire URL. Right? And, and, and next question is then how do you do voting and how do you record the proxy? These are things that's included in the notice as well. And pay particular attention right now because if you are doing it online, the voting, how do you conduct it? And how do you count proxy? How do you verify the proxy? Think the process, correct? And what? means uh, you have to simulate your entire meeting in your mind and plug all the evidential challenge that you might have later, right? That's good. Document shall be served on the owner 14 days or 21 days before the meeting, depending what type of resolution you want to pass, right? Uh, either manual email or QR code or appropriate online method. So the whole idea here is to say, create evidence, create the trail, create the track. Right? You see this thing being repeated the whole of my presentation, but it's important. And the list of the person entitled to vote shall be displayed on the notice board or any web page or any social media at least for 48 hours before the meeting starts. This is for compliance of the statute and make sure that everyone knows. So to me, the more the better, right? Uh, but you make sure that it's all uh, captured correctly. Management body is encouraged to upload the notice of meeting to website or social media, if any. So this is to encourage the reach to everyone because today communication could be challenging. If you do by mail, by person, maybe you can't even locate them, but you have to show your effort. You've done it on this website or social media that's accessible to everyone. And make sure that your email list is updated. That's very important because you don't want to send to people an uh, email address where people don't read. Yeah. 
Participants shall, shall follow the COVID-19 prevention measure uh, and conduct uh, when conducting the virtual meeting. Just remember, it's very important. Uh, although you're doing virtual meeting, if, for example, you're doing a big camera with a lot of people sitting there, uh, it's also a virtual meeting. If you're doing that one, you make sure that you observe the physical uh, distancing and the SOP. Owner shall submit, the, shall submit the proxy form to the management body, either manually or online, at least 48 hours before the meeting. Right, so it's very important. Huh? Again, 48 hours before a meeting, again, how do you prove that you actually submitted at what time? So again, electronically, it might be easier because there's a way to track it. Uh, but nonetheless, keep it so that you ensure your participation to the meeting is valid. Management body can set a series of ID in order to distinguish the owner's proxy and observer on behalf of the meeting. So it's very important because identification, again, keep your QR code, keep your ID, right? It's the duty of the management body to ensure a good internet connection for effective meetings. So if you're a committee member, why well, not make sure that you probably want to increase your bandwidth, whatever, during the meeting time to ensure that it's always stable, right? And the last one, like I said, always build in your dispute prevention consideration. The last thing you want that you have a meeting online and then everyone starts to challenge it. That's, don't, that's what you don't want. Like I said, evidence and proof. Good. And during the AGM and EGM online, management bodies shall ensure that the system is functioning and able to accept nomination of candidates, count the vote, announce the result and record the proceeding of meeting. I give you a very useful tips here. If you are the management, uh, always run a rehearsal. Try to do a rehearsal and pluck the whole and from the mistake that you run the rehearsal, then you know what needs to be done, what needs not to be done. The system shall be able to handle different voting methods, either through hand or by poll, if conjunction of the share unit is assigned. Very important, huh? you must be able to be track this and ready. And since it's online, a lot of tools are available. Go and explore these tools that help you to do this. It's important. Registration shall be open at least two hours before the meeting. If quorum not met, registration has to continue for another 30 minutes. That's important. Appointed chairman to chair the meeting uh, until the end of the until the end. If appointed chairman refuse to conduct the meeting, new chairman shall be appointed from the eligible proprietor. Like I said, you are voting your chairman from the hall. These are the chairman for the meeting. It's not the chairman of the JMB, right? Uh, by the way, the chairman of MC and JMJB doesn't mean that they will necessarily be the chairman of your general meeting. Voting and results shall be displayed live uh, on screen and viewable by attendees, right? Important. The organizing committee of the virtual meeting shall be present at the location where the meeting is convened. This is physical present, huh? uh, but if you are on a virtual, you make sure that you are there and record your attendance because for all intents and purposes, you are the one who are actually guarding the running of the meeting. All right, so after the AGM and AGM management body shall prepare the minutes within the period, minutes shall be displayed at the notice board again. Like I said, a notice board here could be virtual, could be social media, could be official portal. Management body shall submit the related document to COB within 28 days is to file the minutes. COB may instruct AGM to, AGM to reconvene if receive any written complaint from the owner regarding the system or the process issue. So I'm highlighting to you two things, evidence and proof is very important. Otherwise you might subject to this uh, initiative to reconvene again, which you don't want. Mm -hmm. Next one, how do you run a committee meeting online? Um, you can then do it online. And again, it's the galakan. Uh, the galakan. Although you do it online, you have to still observe your SOP. It's very important. The third one, what is the commencement or preliminary management period? You might want to ask, Chris, why do you concern yourself uh, in public management or preliminary management period? You have to understand, once we deliver the vacant possession of the unit, that's where the commencement of the preliminary management period, that's important. What is the preliminary management period? This is the period where the developers start to manage the property until the formation of the joint management body, which is within one year from VP. So why, why is very important is because today we have challenges in delivering vacant possession, right? Section 7.2 of Strata Management Act, developer management period means that period uh, commencing from the date of delivery of vacant possession, right? 
to uh, one month after the establish of JMB or such other time as may be extended by the commissioner. So we know where is this period. And what are the issue? The issue is very simple. You have to understand because during this time, delivery of vacant possession could be very challenging. So delivery of vacant possession and liquidated damages is very important. Notwithstanding anything, the period of 18 March 2020 to 31st August 2020 shall be excluded from the time of the review of vacant possession. So there is no such thing as uh, earlier uh, VP as possible under this part of the Act because of COVID-19 Act. Although it could be earlier, should be due earlier, for all intended purposes, could be actually 1st September, right? So always remember uh, the time of the review of vacant possession is delayed. So when it delayed, during this period, there is delay extended, who is in charge? Developer. And after it's delivered, let's say on the 1st of September, who's in charge? Developer again. So again, the liquidated damages in relation to delay is also being waived because of this COVID-19 Act, right? So again, um, we have to look at, no, we stand this, this, um, they have to say that uh, this period, they, have, they would deem, there's no such thing as deemed vacant possession because under the law earlier, there's an idea if you are given the notice 14 days, you don't come, there will be a deem. But in this case, the deem can only happen after 31st of August 2020, which means that 1st September and then what happened after that, right? This is for the vacant possession. The fourth, defect liability of common property. Because the vacant possession is impacted, therefore the defect liability period is also being impacted. Let's see what the law said, right? Under the law, defect liability of common property is very important. Why do I use the word common property? Is because the property manager or your JMB or your MC is actually managing the common property. You have your claim for your individual unit, but now I'm talking about the swimming pool, the gym and everything else. And because this period between 18 and March or 31st of August is also challenging because nobody uh, used the facility uh, and we cannot test out the functionality of those things and they've been left idle there for months. So again, there is some issue. So the defect liability period after the date of Purchaser take vacant possession of housing accommodation and the time of developer carry out the work will, uh, will again exclude this period of 18 March and 2020 to 31st August 2020. You must understand also there are developers that can actually get another extension effectively until 31st of December 2020, but that is subject to minister approval. But as of the law, as of given, it's actually between 18 March. 2020 to 31st August 2020, you can have that immediately, right? So what are the do and don'ts of management body, right? So number one, you have to understand uh, because there's extra expenses required to sanitize strata building, right? Uh, and it's not within your budget uh, that you're prepared. It's something that is not within your contemplation. Uh, so what you do is that uh, you can actually call for a general meeting to utilize the sinking fund for this purpose, right? This is actually something you may want to consider. Uh, and, and also, if you're running your AGM now, uh, please provide a provision under your service charge com computation for your expected sanitization of your strata building. So I'm highlighting to you, consider uh, using the road of sinking fund if, if the fund is insufficient. Right, and it's very important to look at this as well. Uh, these are some of the things that you, what you can do, what you cannot do in relation to this, the do and don't. So, for example, facility in relation to strata is subject to the direction of the MKN from time to time. Okay, so it was the JMB MC task and duty to ensure the safety and well-being of residents of strata building as contained in the Strata Management Act 2013. And this is by the COB, uh, Dato Kamuru Zaman Mat Saleh himself, right? Property mentioned cannot disclose uh, personal details of COVID-19 uh, patient. You cannot refer to Personal Data Protection Act. This is a special situation in the new normal. You're supposed to expose yourself to the MKN direction, right? So what happened is that uh, for personal data, you have to look at that. Uh, as far as this concerned, uh, you cannot use PDPA. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for your attention. Thank you, HPROP. Thank you for your time and, and attention. Thank you.